and bring on my next guest and talk to this amazing person. You know, one thing in the media, we can be pretty cruel when ones are going through different challenges in their lives and we can just act not right. The way we cover things, trying to get clicks, trying to get um, viewers and all that. See, I'm at a point in my career where I, I don't have to get that. You know, I don't have to talk about salacious things to get clicks and views. You know, my platform is used to inspire, to motivate, and to inform. And if you like that, I appreciate having you. If you're looking for that salacious stuff and me trying to embarrass people, you can go check out the other people over there. That's not how I get down. That's not how I was raised. I treat people with respect. I treat people the way I want to be treated. And my next guest, I am so glad that he did not turn his back on the media because the way he was being treated at one time was dirty. I am so happy to have me right now. My next guest. I've been watching this brother for many years. Got mad skills. We're talking about the amazing Columbus Short. Columbus, what's going on? How are you, my friend? I'm good, brother. How you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, so great to chat with you. I'm so glad. Um, this is my first time chatting with you, and I've been a big fan since Stomp the Yard, man. So yeah, man, I didn't even know you were out there on the on the on the airwaves. I know. See, they kind of relegate me to like the back. I'm like the step brother, so sometimes <laughs> I get to come out. So because of COVID, they let me out to play now. So so it's yeah, all that's, nice. that's good. <laughs> it, it's all good. Hey Columbus, but I wanted to have you on just to talk about your your amazing career and some of the things that that you're currently working on. And um, one thing I wanted to start off by by talking to you about is what, what made you pursue acting as a career? What was it that kind of drew you uh, to this field? Um, I mean, I knew at a young age, man, that I wanted to to do film uh, and, uh, and 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 television. Uh, I mean, some of the first things I could remember, you know, be the magic movie magic that I remember was like Back to the Future. I just found like that that was just. It's like it's incredible how they made this movie and then the you know back to the future too i was like the script writing was just seamless like the perfect story i was like i want to make movies i want to make movies like that and uh you know i was a huge fan of denzel from a kid i just was fascinated how he just brought me in all the time you know from malcolm x to hurricane and you know all those things and i just knew i just wanted to make films you know at the biggest level you know i was a huge tom cruise fan um uh, so on every aspect, I wanted to know everything about filmmaking, um, you know, but coming, starting off as a musician, um, coming from a family of musicians, music was like my first love, but I knew that I wanted to, uh, uh, to also be on screen. I, I just knew I, I wanted to do that. So, you know, I convinced my mom young, I'm like, I was about five, I'm like six, to take me to a McDonald's audition, a uh, commercial audition. I froze up in the audition. I, I, I literally like, they told me, you know, say something. And I'm like, she was like, I'm never taking you to an audition again. And I had to bet, took about four, another four years for, for me to get, get her to get me, to let me go back to an audition. And then from there, it was just, I got bit by the bug. Wow. I, I love it. Now you said a couple of things that, that took me way back to, uh, or back to the future, back to the future has some of the iconic lines that we still use today like make like a tree and get out of here what are you looking at butthead um also when they were talking about um uh rock music with, with, with principal strickland and everything man you took me right. back to Columbus with that man <laughs> yeah, back to the future is the one man that's yeah. the one. that was some great writing you know i remember when i was younger um i was raised in, i was born in compton but raised in long beach and i remember city um, of compton you know it you know it yeah i was i lived in long beach for a long time Oh, wow, man. That's something. See, we got something in common. Columbus, see, that's why we yeah. should have met a long time ago, brother. That's what yeah, I'm talking man. about. You know what was funny was uh, there was an audition at a Jack in the Box back then, and those were when Rodney Allen Rippey was there. And my older sister told my mom, hey, why don't we take Paul and let him be in this audition? Mom's would have. He's like, nah, I don't want no. Well, I, he ain't going there. He's too hyperactive. Yeah. So, so at least your mom's let you go to that audition, man. My mom's, my mom's would have it, man. But, but that, that that's pretty cool about that. Uh, about that experience. And and Columbus, you know, you are an awesome dancer too, man. You know, you you work with Brittany, uh, even in Stomp the Yard. We saw your skills. When you look at every skill that you have, Columbus, which part makes you feel more free? as an entertainer and a talent? 
Hmm, that's a great question, man. Um, I feel like there's a, such a freedom in dancing, right? There's a there's a freedom when you can just, you know, get lost in the um, get lost in the music and you kind of, you know, everything kind of falls away. <clears throat> but there's also that freedom in acting, right? Like, you know, I'm the type of actor when I'm when I'm in a scene or I'm in a character, um, I don't even know I'm there. I'm whatever time frame we're in, whatever moment it, it is, um, I'm present in, in that moment and everything else kind of falls away. Um, so I would say both. Um, but and when I'm making music, same thing. I'm not thinking about anything else. So I think anything um, creative uh, kind of is where I feel free. Now, I feel you. I feel you on that. And and that's one thing I look at it as an outlet too. like for myself when I'm able to to be creative and use my mind. It's like when I, when I want to get away from things, you know, I just go into my creative space and I'm able to just just make things happen. And, and yeah. Thomas, when you when you look at the many roles that you've had over the years, what has been the most impressionable one on you where it challenged your 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 craft, it challenged your skills? And you look back and you say, wow, that was that was pretty tough. But I but I I, I did. Well, it. I would say Cadillac Records was the, the first one that really uh, challenged me all in all, you know, as you know, it challenged me physically because I had to, you know, little Walter, I was playing little Walter. He, he was a wiry guy. So I had to lose about 30 pounds right before we started filming and I was filming on another movie. So physically I, you know, I pushed my, my body to a place I'd never been um, pretty much doing the Beyonce lemonade diet for about 20 days, didn't have any food. So that was weird. Um, that was a tough process there. And then delving into the, nuances of him as a man as a character as a as a, as a musician as a, as a as a legend um you know where he was from he was from the bayou he spoke french you know putting all these things together to kind of build the proper character and tell and portray him um give him justice in the portrayal um all of that was challenging and working with you know jeffrey wright adrian brody beyonce you know the pressure was on you know everybody was trophy chasing even though they didn't say it they were so you knew you knew you had to bring your A game, right? Um, and then this recent this recent role uh, playing MLK, it just you're playing MLK. I mean, I guess that's just it. You you um, embodying him is a task, uh, even though you he's so prevalent uh, and relevant today, um, and it's literally our king, right? Martin Luther. Our king, you know, a lot of people, black folks say Martin Luther the king. Yeah, he is the king, right? Um, and so to portray such a no, notable person, um, icon, a, 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 not a, only an American icon, a world icon, was uh, was daunting. But uh, I was ready for the challenge and, and humbled by the opportunity to be able to portray him. So I think Lil Walter, MLK, they're, they're, those are up there with the the, the challenging ones. Yeah, and and speaking of your role of of playing MLK, you know when I heard that, that you got that role, I remember I was talking to to Carl Gilliard a couple of months ago, and he was talking about this project. And when he mentioned you, I was like, "Wow, that is cool!" Because you know, I, like I said, I've been following you for years and, and many projects you've been on. And, and to me, when when you landed the uh, the part on Scandal, I was like, "I'm so happy that he." is getting the props that he deserved. I mean, because you you got those skills, Columbus, that, that that really needs to be celebrated and highlighted. And playing MLK, my friend, something tells me, man, that there's going to be some, some big things coming your way after that drop. We'll see. I mean, you know, it's just about, I wanted to just put the right work down. You know, as people, you know, our people, especially tough critics, you know, people that don't, it, you don't got to act to be a critic of actors, right? You don't have the right to be a critic of writing. You don't have to be a filmmaker to be a critic of film um, directing. But, you know, I know our people are like, okay, you playing King, let's see what you, let me, let me see what you, let me see what you're doing here. So, you know, I, I, you know, my, my, my priorities are always um, living up to the assignment. And uh, so I hope I, I, I did that. And, <laughs> our people are the worst critics, man. That reminds me of growing up, man. You know, when you get that nice outfit and you, and you know, you know you're looking fly, right? Somebody you know, gonna say something. 
always, always. Right. That's how it is. I'm like, can y'all just celebrate us, please? Can we can we drop right. the shade? You know, right. can you just celebrate me for me? Love me up first and then bring me down first. You know? Yeah, that's exactly right. Thanks for checking us out on our YouTube channel here. And if you want to see more of the rest of the complete interview, you can check us out on the Entertainment Zone app. It's available on Roku, it's available on Amazon, and available on all these other platforms right here. So we thank you so much. I'm going to get back to editing these videos.